a most beautiful day to you here from um, Eastern Finland, subarctic. I just came outside. It's a sunny day. You see, this is well. This is now the sun is in the south, well east southeast. So doesn't really get over the trees. So my solar setups they are not really sufficient in the moment. And I want to give you a little tour around my electricity setup here in the yurt. So um, I've been living here off grid now since uh, two winters. And so I start with this one, and then. You know the whole thing will continue on the inside i just get the brush because i usually brush them off so uh this is something that i once found on a flea market uh it's some um, you know you can fold it up and use it for hiking or so uh take it in your backpack or strap it on your backpack um very poor is this you know it's not uv resistant these straps here but anyhow uh, it does it ele makes electricity so that's good um, this one here belongs to the so-called mobile one and I will show you the mobile one on the inside also and um, the mobile one has been enough for me the last summer I've been doing basically my well I didn't use need the headlamp much but my phone I got charged with the mobile one so that was quite impressive with this little solar cell uh, these big panels they are second hand from some sailing yacht uh, they're supposed to be 100 watt each uh, I made this kind of suitcase around it it's foldable they're a bit flexible um, and yeah I don't get anything from those in the moment like they're I think close to 20 years old or something um, and I need to figure out why I don't get anything. This is the newest addition to the family. It's the solar panel of the Now Light by Desiwatt. Um, and I'm just gaining some experiences with this. And I will also show you where this is connected to on the inside. So, um, yeah, having no clouds and sunny days is a rare thing these days. With climate change, we got a lot more cloud cover temperature today minus what is that 15 16 something um and i'm gonna go inside now and there's some exciting projects coming up so very excited and i put some light on um and this is the now light so the cable from this small solar panel goes in here and it's currently charging it says 83 uh, percent which can't really be uh, these percentage numbers they don't tell much um, because i've just um, charged my phone on that um, and it was empty then and it can be charged by hand and uh, also here like there's a lithium um, iron phosphate battery inside so they don't like uh, cold so i make sure that because here it's the door it's kind of a cold place and it's in the night i cover the door with a blanket so uh, temperature here at the door right now is nine degrees and um so i'm trying to make sure to only charge this battery uh when it's um, plus degrees and yeah this is quite new addition um still need to make some bit of a review to this um, like personal review these straps are somehow interesting um, the whole thing is I think mainly made of plastic the body and the gears and um, and this strap here it's a nice idea really nice like you can with two minutes of pulling you can make two hours of light so there is this light here that can also go quite strong and also connected with the cable is this light here um, that can also go quite bright um, and yeah I've hung it uh, also here in the middle of the yurt so I have these candle holders here and these are fossils 
fossil fuel candles. I'm still trying to make a mold. I get a lot of um, surplus wax from people who use candles and from the graveyard rubbish bins. So I get have access to wax, but I need to get uh, a mold to make these candles myself. Like pulling these candles is for me a bit too slow. I don't have the right container for it. But I have some silicone that I can use to make a mold. And uh, so far I'm using making these kind of candles. This is kind of my pilot light. You know, I just keep it burning. Um, uh, there's a video on my channel where I show you how to make these candles. They use uh, two matches as a wick. And this is just recycled wax that I melt um, here in this little pot uh, on the stove. Um, stove is, by the way, going nicely. Um, yeah, so energy harvesting is the subject. Here's a little energy harvester. Uh, it's this fan that helps distributing warm air in the yurt and it also collects dust quite nicely, I have to say. So um, I'm going back now to the outside, right? You saw this small, uh, this foldable hiking panel. This I have connected to the radio and there's no battery in the radio, it's just running directly now from the solar power. And um, sometimes, you know, when it gets dark, the radio just goes off. And in the morning, when the sun is, the light is strong enough. And that's really surprising, like even on the cloudy days when it's not sunny, like suddenly the radio goes on and I have some music, it's really nice. Um, these two here belong to the Mobile One. You can see it's charging right now. Um, Three out of four. Um, yeah, it takes like, you know, easily, I don't know, probably easily a week or two almost to charge one of those in the moment. Well, it's like one sunny day in the summer, you know, can be enough to charge one. Uh, sometimes I plug this one in. The other one, I got two of these uh, power banks. I think it's also lithium uh, iron phosphate batteries in here. Um, and yeah, they're actually also quite nice lights to um, to use to have hanging in the yurt. So um, yeah, they have a quite wide um, area, big area. So then we have the big panel um, that the cable goes in here. This is the charge controller and the other cable goes down into the basement. Here under the yurt, there's a, a earth fridge where there's a big car battery. Um, yeah, that setup has not been really satisfying. So I'm quite impressed with the small stuff. Um, and there's some modifications, like I want to, I just put this radio off here. So, uh, many years ago I bought this free play hand crank charger, which is like, yeah, you can charge something, but it's not really convenient to use. Um, also... The now light, yeah, it's relatively convenient to use. I really enjoy being able to, you know, knee here on the floor by the window and look out and make some electricity at the same time. Um, I do it like this that every now and then I, you know, sit here and pull like some 10 minutes or so through or five minutes or so just what I feel like. Um, yeah, and here, there's some exciting stuff coming because yesterday I got um, a second hand, like a friendly bicycle repair shop. I contacted, uh, visited all the bike repair shops in town and um, asked if they have any hub motors or um, like dynamos, hub or rim dynamos um, that, you know, I just want to you know, gain, gain some experience and work with some variety of ideas. And um, I was originally looking for a rear hub so that there would be, you know, sprockets attached. This one is a front, front, uh, front hub motor, front wheel. So I have to figure out what to do with this. Um, if there were a sprocket attached, it would be a lot more versatile, a lot easier. But I'll figure something out. Maybe I can run it directly with a belt, you know, take the spokes off and the rim off and just run a belt through here and run a belt on a bigger bike or something, bike wheel. Um, have to see. I don't know yet what to do with it. Nice is it came with 
you know, like um, some cables and um, like this is the thing where you plug in the battery on the bike. Uh, don't have the battery. I think in general the electric, the e-bikes, they are quite nice power plants, you know, nice batteries in there to store electricity. Uh, I wonder if it needs to go to this 36 volt or what they have, like why couldn't we just, because most of this, at least all my devices, they are, can be charged with USB. So why not stay in this low voltage range uh, and, and don't waste so much energy on the um, transmissions from higher voltage to lower voltage. Um, so yeah, that's something. Well, for example, the, the mobile one and also the now light, they're working on low voltage um, because all the batteries, the, the lithium ion um, batteries that we have in our phones, they're like uh, 3.25 volt anyway. So there's, yeah. The 12 volt system is tempting because there's just so much stuff available in 12 volt. Um, which just means, you know, you get a 12 volt motor from a car, like, you know, the, the window motors that lift the windows up and down or the um, motors that, you know, you for the window washers. I don't know. I have to learn these things. Like, need to figure out what motors are available, what motors are good. Um, yeah, something else interesting here is um, this one here. Uh, a Christmas present that I once installed on my bike and wasn't satisfied with it mainly only because I could not switch on like I you know I had to there was I didn't have a switch didn't know how to put in a switch between choosing between the light and this um, like a USB charger thing another interesting one is this one and that's what I'm gonna work on today uh, I got this, um, I think it's a motor from a from an e-scooter, um, 24 volt at uh, 2700 RPM, so if I, I guess if I turn it with 1350 RPM, uh, I will get 12 volt, that's just my assumption, I don't know if it works like this, um, 180 watts, so should be okay for what I'm doing, I uh, had some trouble um, loosening the sprocket, getting that a bit off, but um, now I've managed to loosen it. Um, yeah, the sprocket doesn't accept the bicycle chain, so and I want to. I still have this exercise bike in the barn that I want to use to to run this motor, and um, I've been wondering like how to attach a belt here, how to attach a pulley or something. Um, or how to attach some wheel that I can run it on, you know, run it directly on a bigger wheel or something. And um, now I found this ice hockey puck. So my challenge for today is finding the center. You know, that's like really amazing finding, getting very precise. The, the center of this puck, drill a hole through it. Uh, it's made of vulcanized rubber. So, um, and then get that on here, make some grooves that accept the sprocket in the puck so that the puck will be nicely turned and not slipping also around. And then I hopefully end up having this one attached and that can then roll on on a wheel or maybe I add a groove to run a belt or something. Um, more muscle power machines are here. The sewing machines, the big big sewing machine that's like a uh, treadle and hand crank and um, then the Husk, Husk, Husqvarna machine uh, my dear thing this my all my sewing projects uh, love the sewing so yeah that was it basically <coughs> excuse me um, yeah um, maybe a few few words on the um, on the whole issue of, of uh, electricity um, yeah, I think it's really interesting. We talk a lot about like you know technical solutions, and and it's quite obvious that with our shift uh, and intention to move away from fossils, that we will have a lot higher energy or, or electricity consumption, and that's that's a really tricky one because um, that's not part of our survival priorities, right? Like getting you know electricity is. Is a tool that we use to cover survival priorities maybe um, but we have always 
like for the most part of human history you managed without electricity so i'm wondering uh is it so wise to focus on you know just finding different means and and thinking okay uh we get carbon neutral and then we are fine because obviously it's you know it's not about the climate change uh, it's just one of the big things of course but biodiversity loss is, is in, in obviously like a much bigger issue and um our whole lifestyle um, and ideas on how to live are a bit um, weird uh, or questionable to say the least. So when I when I think about um, what potential we have, right, um, for making electricity, um, the biggest, the first thought that comes to our mind is how much we can actually reduce our need for electricity, like. You know, need for heating, water heating, uh, space heating, uh, industrial production, the big uh, consumers of electricity. Uh, also, electricity production is a big consumer of, of, of fresh water, by the way. It's like some, uh, can't even be like about half or something of the fresh water that is used to cool. Um, but anyhow, the um, interesting part is like, it's, yeah, I mean, like when I when I look at how many electric devices I have managed to reduce myself to, and that I'm able to power them by myself, um, not, not optimal. Like I have to say, I'm really looking forward to have the bike generator, right? To to use muscle big big muscle groups a bit more effective, but it's beautiful. Like you know, I can just grow food and turn it into electricity, right? So without having to go um, big, I don't know, grid system or dependency on a supplier or something, uh, or need to. And when I look at the, the bike generators, um, there are like so many great plants available and DIY solutions on the internet where it's just easy to see that, yeah, we just need to recycle our way through it. Uh, it's all there. We just need to put them together. And um, you know, I, I think every kid or, you know, Every kid in school or two kids together should all leave school with one of those bike generators. That in every second home we will find a, bi a muscle power generator. And of course, uh, ideally something that can plug in other machines directly without the detour of electricity. So, you know, like on a, uh, you know, some agriculture machines, the big ones, you can plug in different tools. And why not, you know, have a treadle? table where you can um, plug in a lace or a bandsaw or well or maybe an electricity generator if needed right um, so yeah I think that's that's really nice to see that we can um, just shift away uh, always amazed that we are talking about how we as countries can cover uh, can can reach Paris uh, like criteria for the Par of the Paris climate agreement if at the same time we as individuals at home can just do so much more it's unbelievable like you know paris is a is a compromise where the economy had a lot far too much to say in it um well we i mean couldn't it's it's us right so anyhow i'm just very happy to see that there's a lot of possibilities to take care of our electricity needs uh, in a much less complicated way than it might look like. So, yeah, quite excited and now ready to w work on this, getting this ice hockey puck into this motor. Um, curious what will come up and yeah, I think you will see results maybe at some point in another video. Mm, I think that's it for now. Have a good time and love you guys and please yeah subscribe send me questions uh comments share videos uh and please also have a look around at other videos uh there's um yeah more videos and more to come have a good time bye bye